What's my toilet running? Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Rebecca from the Knitting Unicorn podcast, and I am your hostess. Um, If you are new here, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, I'm glad you came back. Um, I'm in a different part of my house right now. And there's kitties making lots of noise, so I apologize in advance. That was the dog. Um, Yeah, so... I might, I might have to do this without glasses because I've got a lot of glare right now, but we'll see how that goes. I also um, recently cut my bangs, which I like, but I've discovered that I have a cowlick. Well, it's really annoying. Eh. Anyway, so welcome. This is episode 12, and I have had show notes. I gotta go find them. Please hold. Okay, I'm back. I have my notes. Whoo. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to talk about was knitting mojo. I know that people have lost their knitting mojo in the past. And I know years ago I used to crochet and then I lost my mojo for that and I didn't do anything. And then I got back into knitting. Um, So I totally get that. But I have been knitting like a maniac for over a year, like nonstop. And then a couple weeks ago, I was working on my Tegna, Tegna, and I finished the lace, which... I get very crazy about lace because I want it to be perfect and I always try to use lifelines and then I mess up and then I have to rip the whole thing out because it's so hard to just rip back a row or two without a lifeline and lace, yes you know. And I finally finished that, it took me forever. I think I ripped the lace out like four times and then it was just stuck in it forever. And the yarn I'm using is very thin. Like I actually had to go up a couple sizes to meet the gauge I wanted. Um, And I just didn't want to knit anything. And it was crazy. So I played some video games. And then I decided that I would cast on my Sunset Highway finally. And I got several rows into the yoke and I did not like the way it was looking. Um, It was a combination of I didn't love the colors together so I have to rethink that but also I I don't love doing color work with superwash yarn. Um, I can do it uh, but it's usually in a smaller project it looks good I did not like the way it was turning out. So then I ripped that whole thing out, decided to cast some sun socks, and then eventually my knitting mojo came back. And it was just very bizarre because I haven't been through that in a long time. So, but my knitting mojo is back. And, um, yeah, so what do you guys do if you lose your knitting mojo? Do you try to cast on a new project? Some people said that they just look through Ravelry for inspiration, or some people just take a break. So what do you do? I'd love to know. Um, Because that was really bizarre and unnerving. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone, but it was. It was very unnerving. But anyway. So I have have an F.O. And I will show you those now. Actually, yeah, we're going to talk socks, because that's, I only have an FO for socks. And then we'll talk about the box of socks cow, so I have an update for that. So I finished, finally, my Let It Shine socks. And these are, these are them. Um, The lace is on one side, so there is a left and a right sock, so left and right. 
and you can see it has this pretty little lace pattern all down with a modified eye of partridge heel. I did my regular round toe and these are them and I think they came out really nice. I'm very very happy with them and um, yeah. The yarn is um, Lemonade Shop Magical Lucky Charms and if you've ever had Lucky Charms um, yeah, these are the exact colors of the marshmallows. I hope that when I'm editing this looks right because every time I make a video I think everything looks muted but I mean I'm looking at this and I'm like no those are Lucky Charms. That's exactly what they look like. So anyway, it made me very happy and I loved it. This was a pleasure to knit. Um, like I said earlier, lace sometimes makes me crazy. This was not crazy. This was just a very simple four row repeat. Let it shine by I think it's Sarah Yude um, on Ravelry and it's a, it's a free pattern. So I highly recommend checking this pattern out. If you want to do something that's um, like a vanilla sock but just with a little bit something extra, uh, this was a great pattern. Uh, the whole idea for the pattern is it really highlights your beautiful hand dyed yarns so you're not taking away from it with a crazy pattern um, but it's more than just a plain vanilla so highly recommend this pattern it was awesome I really enjoyed it and it knit up really fast so this was my July sock so, if I'm, so for the box of socks cow which is hosted by um, the Volan Vine Yarn Gasm podcast. Oh my god, what's her name? Kristen? <gasps> Shame on me. I'm having a brain fart. Um, and you'd knit at least 12 pairs of socks for the year. They have to be full size socks. If they're shorties, then two pairs count as one entry. Um, and so, what I'm doing, as a lot of people are who are doing the cow, is just doing one pair of socks a month. And that just makes it manageable, I think. And she also has, uh, in her Ravelry group, every month, a thread where you can post your FOs for that month. So it's been a great way to keep on track, and it's worked out really well for my schedule. So this is my July sock, and I'm going to take you through all of my socks so far for the year. Um, but so that's my only FO. I'm going to go into whips. My next whip is my August sock. It's a, a hoe. And I don't have it on a blocker because I want to show you the pattern in a different way. But real quick, this is the Will-O-Wisp sock. And it is a pattern by This Handmade Life. And this yarn is um, spun right round classic sock in the colorway Secret Handshake. And this is the same yarn I use for the stripes on my Timely Cardigan. And you can see it's a very simple lace pattern. I wanted to actually put my hand in here and show it to you. That's why I didn't want to put it on a blocker. Um, the pattern from the... So if you've seen my Instagram, I've showed this a few times. But this pattern is so gorgeous. This is also a free pattern on Ravelry. And it's a very simple lace. Uh, I did have to follow the chart pretty closely the whole time because it wasn't totally intuitive. It's a little intuitive, but but it was still very, very simple to knit, and it flew. I mean, I did this sock in a couple days. It flew off my needles. Um, absolute pleasure to knit. I loved it so, so much. Um, I did not do her rounded toe. I did my regular toe, but um, I forgot. So when I do my toes... I do um, a decrease round with, very similar to an afterthought heel, I do a regular toe, but it's a, uh, what do I do? SSK, knit two together, oh no, SSK, knit one, knit one, knit two together, then knit around to the other side, do the same thing, and then I knit two rounds flat, I do that three times, then I do a decrease round in one row flat. I do that three times and then I decrease to the end. Long story short, I didn't do the two stitches in between the decreases 
So I got this really weird line that I had to kind of sew up on the inside. But when it's all said and done, it looks fine. When I first um, cast it off and grafted it closed, it looked really weird because um, I totally messed that up. But of course, I want them to match, so I'll have to do the other sock the same way. But anyway, this, again, Will-O-Wisp Socks by This Handmade Life, and I will be casting on the second one shortly for August. And this is gorgeous. Super, super simple, super fast, loved it. So, that being said, I want to show you my progress. So I got a pair of really cute Keds, and they did a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Collaboration with Rifle Paper Company, and they did some really cute Ked shoes with Rifle Paper Company fabric. Um, and so I got a pair. I'm not showing them to you. That's not the point. But the box was so cute. And this is my box of socks. Isn't that cute? And then it slides out. That's a weird noise. But anyway, I think a lot of people are familiar with this fabric pattern and the box is in that pattern and it was just so cute that I decided to make this my box for my box of socks go. So that being said, it is now August, so I have eight pairs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Something's wrong. I have nine pairs of socks. Weird. Okay, well, moving on. I believe these are my January socks. Oh, right, I, these, I have a pair of shorty, two pairs of shorty, so that's why I have so many socks. So January, I hope I get these in the right order. Pair of shorties in Scrumptious Pearls um, Pretty Young Thing colorway, and it's a sparkle, and it's just a gray taupe and pink, and I just did a afterthought heel. Uh, it's very similar to the Smooth Operator pattern, if you're familiar with that. Um, these were my first afterthought heels I've ever done, and I don't like the way they fit me. So uh, I do have a couple pairs of socks in here with afterthought heels. This is one of them, uh, and I really don't wear them. So I might wash these and block them again and give them to my sister-in-law because she loves pink, um, and she has smaller feet than I do, so these might fit her nicely. But I find that the afterthought heel socks slip off my feet. But anyway, here's one pair for the box of socks. And then the other shorty pair I have, which is also an afterthought heel, is uh, Nomadic Yarns Rhinebeck Sweater Weather Cell Striping. Um, these are crazy cute. Crazy cute. Uh, also an afterthought heel in here. And I did these a little different. I, um, I did some extra rounds here and then I did some extra rounds here. This looks really weird. They obviously have not been blocked in a while and whatever but I just felt like I needed a little extra space at the heel and um, these fit better than the pink ones do still not perfect but better um, but this pattern is great and I actually I have more of this because I only did a shorty pair so I will probably make another pair of these with a regular heel flap and gusset um, because I know that fits really well, but these are really cute and this ugh, come on nomadic yarns makes such gorgeous stripes gorgeous Love 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 this colorway So those count as one pair for the cow uh, Then I have for February I cast on um, My Olympics socks team USA and it is 
yes, these are Hermione's Everyday Socks. And um, they are Lolo Did It in the colorway is Triumph and then Sriracha. And this is just a uh, regular Eye of Partridge heel. And yeah, these came out gorgeous. These fit fantastic. Um, the Hermione's Everyday Sock, as everybody who's knit it knows, it's super easy and it's really pretty. Um, free pattern, I believe. And these were just, these are really fun to knit up. So I really like them. So these are my Team USA socks. I knit them in February while watching the Olympics. And then for March, we have, I got for my birthday last year, um, Teeny Button Studios does a mystery Harry Potter yarn club. And I got, I did it for my birthday and the colorway was a puffle of puff skeins, which was a pygmy puff inspired colorway. And so I did a pair of shorty socks in that. And I love that because I love pygmy puffs. And I was at uh, Universal Studios when I knit these. So I was in uh, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter while knitting my pygmy puff socks. And I just thought that was so apropos. So those are these. And these fit me perfectly because these are a shorty sock with a regular heel flap and gusset modified eye of partridge. Um, and all I did, very vanilla sock. I did eight rows of two by two ribbing, eight rows of just plain stockinette. Then I did my heel flap and gusset and then the toe, the foot and the toe. And these fit amazing. So I think this is going to be my go-to shorty pattern. So these are great. And then the shorty to match. Um, these are my Rose City Rollers. And these are done in Sweet Georgia Tough Love Sock in the colorway Smitten. Um, these did pill quite a bit, but to be fair, I have worn them quite a lot. But this colorway is really pretty. It's very, very gentle. Um, very, very pretty. And I'll show you, I did the Wildflower and Honeycomb socks, which I'll get to. And I think I might do those again in this colorway because I obviously have a lot of it left over from just doing a shorty sock. Um, I think this color would look so nice in that pattern and I'll show that, like I said, in a moment. Um, so that was March. April. So then I got all themey, and I did April. I wanted to have a pair of socks for April showers and then a pair of socks for May flowers. So my April showers socks, uh, I used the drippity drop pattern from Kay Jones from the Bakery Bears podcast, and that's these. And the colorway is Birch Dye Works Storm Cloud, and I just thought it was all perfect. Storm Cloud colorway with drippy drop socks for April showers, which I've showed these before, but obviously I've showed all of these before, but these are so pretty. Um, this pattern was fun to do. It was very simple, easy repeat. I highly recommend it. Um, the only thing I would say is that if you haven't really done a lot of slip stitch sock patterns to either make sure you're knitting loosely or go up a needle size because they don't have a ton of stretch across the top where the slip stitch pattern is. Um, so I have to kind of yank them on really good, but once they're on, they fit amazing. So these are beautiful socks. I love these. And that was April. So then May flowers, I did the wildflowers and honeycomb socks, which are also from This Handmade Life. These are probably, well, I think since I've done two of her socks now, I'm just gonna say that they're all my favorite. Um, but I really, these are a, a pay pattern on Ravelry. And they are stunning, absolutely stunning. Um, they knit up crazy fast, they're beautiful, very easy repeat. And then the heel has, it's a heel fluff and gusset, it has this little 
texture that looks like honeycomb. So it's wildflowers and honeycomb. And I love these. I, I love these socks so much. So that's why I knit the uh, Willow Wisp socks because I wanted to try another one of this Handmade Life patterns. And she has all these beautiful pa sock patterns that are like very lacy and delicate, but easy and fun and fast to knit up. So these are one of my favorites. So it's my May sock. And this yarn is um, the Bramble colorway sock set from uh, Wool Barn. Love, 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 love. And then for June, I decided to do a pair of socks for my husband for Father's Day. And so I got the um, also Nomadic Knits colorway Lupin. And it's uh, based on Remus Lupin from Harry Potter. I'm going to put these on the blocker because they look completely shapeless when they're not on the blocker. Just a vanilla sock that I did for him. That's actually navy. It looks like black, but it's navy. And um, this is, uh, no, the toe is that. The heel is spun right round in Reaper's Rags. And it's just a plain stockinette heel. Um, he usually wears these just around the house, so I wasn't terribly worried about doing something thicker like an eye of partridge or whatever. So I just wanted it to be very, very simple. So just a plain sock. But they're really pretty and they fit him really well. Um, so yeah, that's how I feel. So those are my June socks. And then I just showed you my July sock, which was the Let It Shine. And I just showed you my August sock, which is the Will-O-Wisps. So that is my progress so far on the Box of Socks Cow. Um, for October, I do have it. I am going to do, oh no, September's first. I don't know what I'm doing for September. I have a bunch of sock sets that I've showed. Um, and maybe I'll do one of those. But for October, I'm definitely doing, I got this at Rhinebeck last year. It's, um, Blue Moon Fiber Arts Super Sparkle Sock, and the colorway is Samhain. This is going to be my yarn for my October sock. And it's just so gorgeous. And then, again, I don't know what I'm doing for November, but for December, I have uh, the Nomadic Yarns... Um, Yule this is a gorgeous self-striping sock from Nomadic Knit, uh, Yarns. So this is going to be my December sock. Um, and then I'll be done. That's crazy. I can't believe how fast this year is going and just the fact that I am actually staying on track for this box of socks, Cal. Um, and I'm loving it. I love having all these hand knit socks. It's amazing. Um, and yeah, so that's that. Moving on. We are going to talk about, ooh, Stash Dash. So for those of you who don't know, the Knit Girls host a cal every summer for Stash, Stash Dash. And you can um, enter to do, this year I think they added a thousand yards or meters, and then there's 3,000 yards or meters, 7,000, I think there might be even 10,000. So I decided to do the 10,000 uh, yard stash dash. What did I just say? No. 3,000. Is that what I said? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm doing 3,000. And I thought that that might be a stretch, but um, I'm, I'm doing it. And as you know, I've done a bunch of sweaters. And so, so far for Stash Dash, I have knit, do I have everything in here? Yeah, it's only finished objects, so my half objects don't count. So, so far for this summer, 
I have done 3,718 yards. And that includes my drippity drop socks, because I didn't actually finish those until early June. Um, my Father's Day socks, my campsite cardi, my beekeeper cardigan. I made a little striped beanie, because I just felt like doing something easy the other day. And my let it shine socks. So, so far I'm, at, I'm over the my finish line. So I'm past the 3K and uh, I think I will have, I think this ends at the end of August, let's see. Okay, so there's 1,000 or below, 3,000, 5,000, 7,000, 10,000, and 15,000 or above. And it goes from May 25th through August 27th. So, um, I have through the end of, pretty much the end of August. So I think I will finish my Will-O-Wisp will socks. I will finish uh, my underwing mitts, which I'm gonna show you in a second. And I, I might finish my Tegna, but I don't know because that's going really slowly. So I might get over 5,000, which would be really cool. And if that's the case, then next year, I'll sign up for the 5,000 instead of the 3,000. So if you are interested, um, you can still enter. You just put in all of your FOs that, from that time frame. Go to the Knit Girls uh, Ravelry group and check out the chatter thread for Stash Dash 2018. You can read all the rules there, how to do everything, how to post, because it's a very specific format on how to post, and, uh, and join in. Yeah, so any, any FOs from... May 25th to August 27th would count. Um, and it's a lot of fun, and it's a great way to get through your stash. So I highly recommend it, and a good way to keep motivated. So what else? Oh, so I'm going to show you some of my whips, I think. The rest of my whips. So I, um, I finished my Will-O-Wisp sock, like I said, and then I hope if I could find it. Okay, let's start again. So I finished my Will-O-Wisp sock, and um, I don't have second sock syndrome, but I need coffee. Um, I, de I don't like to cast on the neck sock right away. I usually have a bunch of whips going on anyway, so I like to work on something else for a little bit before I cast on the neck sock. I just need a little break, but it's not, I wouldn't call it second sock syndrome because I always get my other sock done. But, like I said, I'm working on the Tegna, and it's really slow going, and I have a really hard time just sitting and busting through those rows and rows and rows of stockinette. And I'll show that in a second. Um, so because I really didn't feel like knitting on that, I decided to cast on another pair of underwing mitts, which I knit earlier this year, um, if you've seen previous podcasts or you follow me on Instagram, you've seen them. I knit them up, and they were gorgeous. I knit them up in a Haven Fiber Arts colorway. Uh, it was a kit that she did for the Underwing Knits Cal, and it was stunning. And these are by Erica Hauser. And I didn't really gauge swatch, because I don't gauge swatch for um, mm -hmm, accessories. Um, but they came out teeny tiny. They did not fit my hands at all. So I gave them to a friend. Ooh. That was almost disastrous. So I gave them to my friend Betsy because she has little skinny hands. And uh, I had planned on making another pair for myself at some point. So I decided to order some wool, some Barrett wool, uh, which is from Susan B. Anderson. And I'll show that in a second because it's gorgeous. And the wool arrived, and I decided to cast on a pair of underwing mitts for myself. So I finished the first one last night. <gasps> Ta-da! Is this not gorgeous or what? So this is the front, and this is the back. It's still a little damp from blocking. Um, this is gorgeous. I'm in love. So, uh, like I said, this is Barrett wool. And it's a fingering weight, 100% American wool. It's actually more of a sport weight. It's just, it's a little bit thicker than a regular fingering weight. But I'm not complaining. I love it. Um, 
and it's in the white it's called picket fence and the bluish teal color is called scout and then I did the underwing color um, this is the Haven Fiber Arts color that I did my original mitts in and I just think that this came out gorgeous and they actually fit me I haven't cut my ends because I don't cut them till after I finish blocking they have been woven in they just haven't been cut so they're all in here making it difficult but these are them and I just I love them so anyway I don't want to stretch them out too much while they're still damp so what I did is um, like I said I knit them in a different wool which is a little bit bigger a little thicker and I went up two needle sizes so I knit these on a US size 3 needle and they came out great um, they're not too big but they're they're not super tight I think I could even go down to like a size two or two and a half with the same wool and they would be perfect um, but I like these I'm, I'm very happy with the way they came out and I cast on the second one last night so I'm only here I just barely started it um, but yeah I'm absolutely loving that I now have a pair of these that fit me um, and so like I said the wool Barrett wool this is, uh, these are the two colors I used. Mm. Get a good view of that. That's the white. And then I also got, well, I ordered a skein of the orange. It's called Marmalade. And I'm going to use these together to do the, um, Pumpkin Spice Latte Mitts from Skein Deer, because they're adorable, and I love Pumpkin Spice Lattes, because I'm basic. No, I'm not basic, but I feel basic when I say that. Um, so yeah, I got those, and I love this wool. I mean, this wool is just absolutely stunning. So if you don't know, Barrett Wool Co. And, um, excuse me, kitty. And it's a, um, so you can see it's 100 grams, but it's 370 yards. And usually you get between 400 and like 450 for a fingering weight. So this is definitely a little bit thicker, um, but it's gorgeous. And it's not super wash, so it's great for color work. But even though it's not super wash, it is not toothy at all. I mean, I could wear this right up against my skin. You could easily do a beautiful color work sweater with this. Um, and wear it on your skin. I'm a little sensitive to non superwash wool, so if I can wear it, you can wear it. Um, I am definitely going to buy a lot more of this yarn. Um, I'm going to make a sweater for my husband, and I think I might get him some of this for that sweater. This is just gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. So, highly recommend checking it out. There it will go. And then. Before I dive into more stash acquisition, I was going to show you my Tegna. My Tegna is living in my French supply bag. Ooh, and I got a new little pin. Oh, this one. Yeah, it was appropriate. So the Tegna, which is a beautiful cropped sweater by Caitlin Hunter. Well, I know I showed the picture before and you've probably seen it a million times, but I'll show it again. That's the Tegna. Um, I am using the rest of my Spun Right Round from my Timely sweater. Uh, this is the Reaper's Rags colorway. It's gray. Um, this yarn is very, very thin. It's like a light fingering. So because of that, when I did my gauge swatch, and I'm also a bit of a tight knitter, I ended up, my gauge was too tight. So what I did is I didn't want to go up in needles because I didn't want it to be a looser fabric than this. I, I really like the way this fabric came out and it's the way it drapes. Uh, so I calculated the stitches I would need to cast on um, in order to meet my 
bust measurement. And it was like the size I wanted for if I met gauge would have been like 300 stitches. I can tell you. I have the piece of paper. What did I do with it? There it is. Um, so, blah, blah, blah. Right. So for the size I wanted, so, okay. It's supposed to be five to 10 inches of positive ease. So I only wanted five inches because when you get up into the large, extra large sizes, 10 inches of positive ease, I think, is too much, and then you start to look like a tent. So I think the bigger the size, you wanna to go to the lower end of the ease when it's one of these oversized sweaters. That's my opinion. Um, but I didn't wanna look like a big circus tent, so I only wanted to go to five inches of ease. So for me, that would have been a large, um, and that would have been, one, two, three, Four, 380 stitches but because of my gauge in order to meet gauge and get the same bust measurement I had to cast on 480 stitches which is in between a 2x and a 3x according to this size chart not a 2x or a 3x I'm just a large but we'll see so anyway I did it like I said my lace took me several several days to do but I got it it came out nice um whatever and it's just been slow going on this the last few weeks and this because it's just plain old stockinette in the round this has become my mindless knitting movie theater knitting car knitting whatever um so because of that it's going even slower I'm just I just find it really hard to sit and focus on it. Not focus on it, because I can do it when I'm watching TV, but I just get really bored. Um, and I'm definitely a project knitter, not a process knitter, so I just want this done, and I'm just struggling with it. So if anyone wants to sit and do a ton of stockinette in the round with this super teeny tiny thin yarn, please let me know and be my guest. Um, in order to help me, my dear friend Carol from a single strand studio gave me a cute little Starbucks Frappuccino progress keeper to help motivate me. Um, it has actually helped a little, but we'll see. So I'll probably finish my mitts and my socks and then focus on this because I do want it for Rhinebeck. Oh, and <laughs> That's the other thing. I was at knitting group last week and everyone was like, you should turn it into a skirt. Let me see if I can show you. Ah! Right? Like, no, you can't see me. <laughs> Wouldn't this be a super cute skirt? I can't tell you I'm not considering it. Um, but I still have several rounds to go if I did it. So cute. But anyway, I want the Tegna to have for Rhinebeck. Um, I am, and that actually brings me to the other thing I wanted to talk about, is that um, I am volunteering for Indie Untangled, which is the kind of Rhinebeck kickoff trunk show party thing the night before um, the festival actually opens. And I went last year, and it was it was awesome, but it was crazy busy. And I thought that if I could get into volunteer this year, um, it would be a really cool experience. I'd get to meet all the people from Indian Tangled, get to meet all of the uh, vendors a little bit more. Um, you get a cool goodie bag if you vo volunteer, and you get to shop before everybody else. So that's like the big draw to volunteer. So anyway, I did get picked as a volunteer. I will be at Indian Tangled, which is October 19th, 18th, whatever that Friday is before uh, Rhinebeck. I will be a greeter from 3 to 5. So if you are at Indian Tangled between 3 and 5, say hi. Um, I will be there with my friend Amber, also from a single strand studio, and we are going to be greeters. Um, 
excuse me, my husband will also be there as a volunteer, um, and he's go going to be helping out with some of the vendors and making sure they have everything they need. So anyway, come say hi. It'll be awesome. I'll remind you again. But I wanted to wear my Tegna at Indian Tangled because um, it'll be indoors last year. I know it's a new venue, and it's going to be bigger and hopefully less crowded, but last year it was so crowded, it was so hot that you definitely didn't want to wear like a sweater. And so I thought that since the Tegna was more of a lightweight summery thing, that would be a nice thing to wear indoors at Indian Table. So fingers crossed that I get it finished, but I did promise husband that I would knit him a sweater for Rhinebeck. So I need to get on that. Anyway, so... That being said, stash acquisitions, and then we'll be done. And you can go knit if you haven't been knitting already, because you should be. So I already told you about the Barrett wool. Um, the other thing I got, not actually stash, but cute. I got this cute little bag that I'm using for my notions now. Says, he said I was delusional. I nearly fell off my unicorn. Come on, I had to have it. Um, and then for yarn, I've been telling you all about the amazing Legend of Zelda Yarn Club, Mystery Yarn Club. And I told you that for August, the um, color inspiration is Navi, which is Link's little fairy companion, who's typically blue. And I got that last week, whatever. Anyway, this is Whips on Sticks, Legend of Zelda Yarn Club. <gasps> Navi! Oh my god. Look at it. Look at the sparkle. It's so pretty. And then she always includes a little something um, that I believe is something that she's made. And the last two were progress keepers, but this time, I, like, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know I died when I opened the box. She made little Navi earrings. So that's what Navi looks like. It's a little fairy thing that follows Link around and yells at him all the time. Um, these are... One, friggin' adorable. And two, wait, wait, there it is. <gasps> they glow in the dark. Yes, they do. They glow. They're so cute. I can't. I love them so much. I was going to wear them for the podcast, but then I wanted you to see her cute little card and her little, eh. We're struggling here, aren't we? Her little logo. So, anyway. These are amazing. I love them. I love them. I love everything. So what I think I'm going to do, I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again, is um, this is my third sock set for the club. And next month, the inspiration is Ganondorf. And Ganondorf's a bad guy, and he's like red and black. Um, but what I'm thinking is that I'm going to make a pair of socks out of all of them. Maybe shorty socks. Because I don't want to use too much of the yarn. And then I'm going to take all the yarn that I have left over and do a big, like, a find your fade or something. Um, so, but I'm going to wait, you know, for all the characters to come out. Obviously I need Link, so I can't do it until I get Link. But, um, yes, so if you are into The Legend of Zelda, check it out. Um, or if you just love beautiful colorways, check it out. Um, even if you don't like care about the Legend of Zelda video game, um, I'll put in a picture of the other ones because I don't feel like digging through there. Um, they're just, the colorways so far have been absolutely stunning. So um, check that out. Whips on sticks. She's awesome. Check it out. Then, my lovely friend Nana, Nicole, from Von Hertzen um, Craft and Fiber, she did 
First of all, she's my yarn twinsy, and um, I adore her. She did a gorgeous set of colors inspired by the uh, Grand Budapest Hotel, the Wes Anderson movie. If you like Wes Anderson movies and you haven't seen that one, check it out. He did. He does movies like um, Royal Tannenbaums, um, The Life Aquatic. Uh, the Darjeeling Express, those movies. Um, definitely check out Grand Budapest Hotel if you haven't yet. It's a great, fun movie. So she did a whole bunch of colorways inspired by all the characters, and they were stunning. Stunning. Um, I will try to put in a picture of the entire collection over here because they were gorgeous. Um, I could not buy the entire collection because I think my husband would kill me. So I only got three from the, what I consider the main characters, or the heroes. So this one is Agatha. This is based on the character Agatha. And they're all, the ones I got are Merino Silk. I just dropped one. Okay, so this is Agatha. This is based on Zero. Zero is kind of the main character. And Agatha and Zero love each other. And then I also got Gustav because, well, if you've seen the movie, you really can't have this collection without Gustav. He's kind of important. This is Gustav. And this is kind of based off of his suit. So I bought these three colors. They looked gorgeous together, and I'm going to do some sort of faded cardi. I might take the timely cardigan, like the numbers from it, and make that pattern, but instead of striping it, fade it with these. So that's my current plan. And they're gorgeous. Merino silk, gorgeous singles. Look at that. She did an amazing... And then, because she's the sweetest, most lovely person ever, and my yarn twinsy, she also sent me a one-of-a-kind skein that she made, and it's called, uh, well, it says GB Casting, uh, Grand Budapest Casting. She basically took all the colors from the entire collection and put them in this skein. This is just a uh, merino nylon sock yarn. And... It's like all the colors from the whole collection. It's just gorgeous. So this is her tag. And um, she's a lovely person and her yarn is so gorgeous. So if you haven't already checked out Von Hertzen Craft and Fiber, she's on Etsy, check her out. Gorgeous. So she is on vacation for a couple weeks, so if you do order anything, you might have to hang on a couple weeks before you get it, but it is worth it. It is stunning, and especially this Grand Budapest collection. Gorgeous. Maybe this will be my September sock. The wheels are turning. Um... I almost forgot, so I'm sticking this in, and I hope you don't notice, but you will because I just said that. But anyway, one more stash acquisition I totally forgot about, and it's gorgeous, is uh, Hedro Yarns. She did a uh, sock set called Lupins, and it's for the Flower Power Fund. And um, it's a great cause, so definitely check it out. This is her Lupin colorway. If you don't know the Lupin flowers, they are gorgeous tall, usually this color, um, but yes, gorgeous. So check out Hedro Yarns. She's awesome too. Yeah. So that's it. Um, the only, okay, so the last thing, not really important, not really even my announcement, but um, I mention all the time a single strand studio. It's Amber and Carol. They are mother-daughter duo. They are amazing. And yes, Amber's my bestie, so I'm a little biased. But their bags and needle cases are fabulous. If you haven't checked them out, you should. And right now, I'm building them a new website, which is coming soon. 
and as soon as that is done and launched and ready to go, you can go on there and buy everything you want. Um, but I'm plugging it because not only are they my friends, but I'm building the website, so I'm really proud of it. So check it out when it's done. I will let you know. Follow them at a single strand on Instagram, um, and then also follow me, and we will announce their new website when it's done so you can see what I did and check out their amazing stuff. So that's all. Thanks for sticking around, and I hope that you uh, enjoyed this podcast. And I'll see you soon, maybe with a finished Tegna. Probably not. Bye.